Okay, hello everybody. I'm very glad to give this talk on Transcode the AI systems. And uh, let me start uh, by saying that there is currently a great confusion about what intelligence is and what is the path to follow to go from uh, weak AI we have to today to artificial general AI. Today we have just elements to build intelligent systems, but we don't have the principles and the techniques to build complex intelligent systems, and this is what I'm going to explain. We need a transition from weak AI to artificial general intelligence, and uh, this will be marked by the convergence between AI and ICT. And you know probably that AI and ICT have been evolving uh, independently for decades, and now we need to bridge the gap between model-based ICT and the data-driven AI, and the issue of trustworthiness is very, very important. And to bridge this gap, we need to apply AI advances to ICT, in particular to be able to build uh, autonomous systems. And also, uh, ICT advances should allow AI to meet growing storage and computing demand. This is something very, very important. So uh, autonomous systems emerge from the need to further automate processes and replace humans by machines, in fact. So to move from automated systems to general intelligence systems. And uh, this requires, as I said, the link in AI to ICT. And also, it should be emphasized that autonomous systems uh, support the paradigm of intelligence systems that goes far beyond the uh, machine learning systems we have today. Now, this is an outline of my talk. I will explain autonomous systems, can we trust AI systems, and talk about the future. To start, I will say that an autonomous system is a system very different from automated systems. I've been working on autonomous uh, cars for years. So here I show an, the architecture of an autopilot uh, that continues to interact with uh, a, an external environment. You can understand this. You have sensors and actuators. And uh, you need to achieve uh, situation awareness here. Uh, oh, it does not show. OK, so situation awareness means uh, perception and reflection. You have frames that arrive. Perception usually implemented by using a neural network. You analyze the frames. You find the obstacles around the car. And then you, take, you send this information about the obstacles, their kinematic attributes to a reflection function that will build a model of the external environment, based on which you will make decisions. And making decisions means two things, uh, that you manage goals, and for each goal you have planners that will generate commands. So it should be understood that for autonomous systems you have to deal with many different goals, more than 15 goals, for instance, for self-driving cars, short-term goals, longer-term goals. And uh, they, 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 typically, for instance, you have short-term goals, avoid collision, uh, keep the car on a trajectory, long-term goals, I'm here, I'm driving to a destination. This uh, regarding the reactive behavior of the system, and you have also proactive behavior based on knowledge management, and this is ve something very, very important for autonomous systems. You see here I have a knowledge repository where I have pre-stored knowledge and the self-learning component that analyzes the information flow and uh, continuously updates the knowledge repository. Why this is important? Because you have to detect, for instance, to, 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 to make better predictions and meta, better decisions based on the use of knowledge. Just to give you an example, if I have a, in a self-driving car a truck ahead of me and uh, I recognize the type of truck and I have stored the, the, its properties, maximal speed, maximal acceleration, I can make better predictions. Or the self-learning system can estimate parameters that are used by decision making. So this is a vision. And I should emphasize that we don't know how to implement this vision. These are ideas I have published six years ago. Uh, we don't know how to implement these ideas because of complexity issues. You have uh, complexity of perception, for instance. Uh, you have environments that can maybe ambiguous, maybe vague. You have complexity from uncertainty of the environment because of non-predictability. You can have rare events, critical events, failures, and attacks. And you have, of course, complex issues 
for decision. This is a very hard problem because you have many goals running in parallel, and if you want to change a goal, then you have uh, this chance should be consistent with all the other uh, goals you are pursuing. What should be emphasized also is that if now I have uh, just a platform, for instance, for self-driving car, this should be integrated in a complex electromechanical environment. This is not a simple problem. And also, autonomous agents should collaborate with humans. And we know from, from the problems encountered in the autonomous car industry, this is not a simple problem. This is not a human-machine interaction problem, simply. And then, once you have many agents, they should collaborate to achieve some global behavior. For instance, if you have many self-driving cars, uh, they should... Uh, so the, the, the agents should be adequately coordinated. Uh, the coordination should not impede the achievement of individual goals, and also you should have some synergy, some collaboration to achieve global goals, what we call collective intelligence. So, just to say that there are a lot of complexity issues, and uh, let me explain where we are today. Uh, so, today we know how to build automated systems. We have very uh, good uh, development uh, methodologies uh, that are model-based, but these methodologies are defeated by the complexity of, of, of autonomous systems. And another way that is taken by some big tech companies like NVIDIA and Waymo is to develop end-to-end uh, -end, uh, machine learning solutions. As you see here, you have a huge neural network, you train it, you send frames, and you compute steering angle acceleration, deceleration signals. So, such platforms exist, you may buy them, but I would not advise that you use them just because of reliability issues that you can have. And also, there are other problems we don't know how to integrate in, 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 in electromechanical environments, so, uh, because the existing techniques do not scale up. I think that for the future, to finish about autonomous systems, we should strive to develop uh, hybrid techniques, where we take the best from each, and uh, uh, so we can have model-based components for decision-making and data-driven components for, for perception, for instance, and, and of course there are a lot of problems to be, to be solved yet. Then let me talk about uh, uh, trust in AI systems, because this is becoming a very, very hot topic today. And to start, I would like to explain that humans and machines use different types of knowledge. Probably you know that uh, our uh, thinking combines two systems, uh, fast thinking and slow thinking. Fast thinking that is non-conscious and effortless. This is the kind of thinking we use to produce any kind of empirical knowledge. When I speak, for instance, when I walk, my brain solves very hard problems we don't know how. And then slow thinking is conscious thinking, uh, controlled, effortful thinking, and this is the kind of thinking you use when you program, for instance, when you solve a problem. And there is a very striking analogy between these two systems of thinking and the types of computers we have today. We have conventional computers that we program using system two, and uh, we understand what the computers can do, and we can analyze this. And then you have neural networks that generate empirical knowledge, that is database knowledge, and we don't understand how they work. And this is a very important issue, because they know how to distinguish cats from dogs, as children do, but we don't understand why. And let me further explain this. When you are a system engineer, you deal with different types of knowledge. The blue area is non-empirical knowledge that comes from mathematics, from reasoning, and below you have knowledge, empirical knowledge, about the world. So you have very simple knowledge about, for instance, events and conditions. Today the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, for instance. And then you have a common empirical knowledge, the knowledge of system one, and uh, uh, machine learning is, uh, provides this type of knowledge. Here you have predictability, but you don't understand how this is achieved. And this is a problem. And then the scientific and technical knowledge that we use to build artifacts today is knowledge that we trust. Why we trust? Because we have theories that explain. So if you build a bridge, you know, you understand why it will not collapse for centuries, okay? So there is a big difference, and this is a very important issue in systems engineering today if you want to use machine learning techniques. And to further explain this, just to show that when you produce scientific knowledge and machine learning generating knowledge, you use uh, similar processes. 
you have an experimental step, a learning step, and an explanation step. Here I'm considering a, a, a famous experiment in physics, so Galileo did experiments. He remarked the proportionality between force and acceleration and formulated the famous law. But any engineering process involves these three steps. Now, if you want to build a neural network that will separate images of cats and dogs, you will have an experimental step that this is a very important step. You take the images and you have a person that will label the images, and based on this labeling, you will train the neural network. And hopefully, it will be able to distinguish between cats and dogs. But the question is how it works. And we have no clue about that. We have no theory. And this is, this is an important question. Now, uh, the, the important discussion today, we have discussion about chat GPT, whether we should trust AI systems, etc., is a technical problem. Is the problem of validation of system properties. How we can validate system properties? There are, in fact, two approaches that I show here. One approach is by verification and the reason. And the other is by testing. That is empirical approach. The approach by verification and reason is that I have a model of my system. I can analyze the model. I can see all the possible states, all the possible configurations. I can reason about that. So in classical systems engineering, verification plays a very, very important role. And thanks to verification techniques, we can guarantee some very important properties. I have worked with aircraft, for instance, uh, systems, and you can guarantee the safety of, of, of the, 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 the systems. Why? Because you can analyze the properties of, of, of the states, and you can guarantee this. And for neural networks, we cannot apply verification techniques. So what we can apply? We can apply test methods. And if you apply tests, you are doing experiments. You are applying inputs. You observe the behavior, and you, 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 you decide about, OK. So first of all, you are limited in the type of properties you observe. And, and then, of course, you cannot, you cannot have strong guarantees. So for instance, typically, safety and security can only be falsified. What are the implications of this in systems engineering today? Uh, very serious implications. Uh, you see, for instance, uh, here you see uh, Waymo. They claim that their system is safe because they have driven 10 billion autonomous miles. This requires very complex simulators, a lot of computing power, and this is not enough. This is not enough because if you apply statistics-based criteria, you see that this is not enough. And this is not enough also because uh, current simulators are not realistic enough, and they have performance problems. So I, I believe that uh, validation of system properties, of intelligent system properties, will become a very, very important issue in the future. Uh, and, and, and we will need, in particular, uh, massive data and, and a lot of computing power to do that. Now, to conclude, I would like to discuss two slides about the future. And uh, uh, the first is that uh, uh, this idea of the marriage between computing and AI. And not, not, I'm not talking now about chat GPT and things like that. I'm talking about systems that will generate knowledge. You know that humans are restricted by what uh, psychologists call cognitive complexity. Uh, cognitive complexity means that we cannot understand the relations that involve uh, many parameters. And systems are not limited by that. And, and uh, because we are limited in, in, in this respect, all the scientific theories we have, uh, have are, are involve a small number of independent parameters. And uh, so when you try to explain economic uh, phenomena, uh, complex systems, you do some unrealistic uh, simplification. So what's my vision for that? I think that in the future, we will develop what I call neural ORAC. What is a neural ORAC? It's not chat GPT. It's a huge neural network that you train to predict complex phenomena. I know an interesting project, for instance, on predicting earthquakes. And the, the published results are really impressive. They, they predict better than 
then uh, approaches that rely, rely on, 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 on scientific theories. And then, of course, we will have complex simulated systems, intelligent, intelligent digital twins. This will become something very, very important. Simulation will be of increasing importance in the future. What this means practically? This means that we will have a, a new kind of science where we, it will be possible to predict without guarantees. So, I mean, this involves some risks, but I don't want to discuss this. Also, this means that we will uh, require large-scale AI workloads. It's estimated that by uh, 2027, 20% uh, of the Ethernet switch ports will be dedicated to AI. So, should take into account this. And, of course, there are other issues uh, that, that knowledge production is no long, longer a privilege of humans, we should think about that. So, I have some time left, so I'll take the time to, to comment my last slide. Uh, this is something that will become very important, because in the future, we will be, in any artifact, you will have AI. So, it's not about AI systems that interact with the user, you would like to have AI in any artifact, in any system, and increased uh, degree of autonomy. Now, today, systems engineering is disrupted by trends that because big companies, economic interests, and technical needs push for intelligent systems. So we have some trends, like, for instance, adopting end-to-end machine learning-enabled techniques, and, and uh, this is a problem because of limited transworthiness. In some countries, they allow self-certification. Self-certification means that you don't have independent inst institutions to certify the systems, but in the United States, for instance, for self-driving cars, the manufacturer will, will, uh, will guarantee the safety of the system. And then also they allow, for instance, regular updates of critical software. We know this, and, and this is against, against standard practices. For the future, I see, I see three important directions. One is hybrid design. How to integrate AI components in systems. And this means that we need to build trusted systems from non-reliable components that will be AI components. And this raises some, some non-trivial problems. There is some theory about how to do that. Then system validation will become very, very important. I explained that we cannot apply verification techniques, so we will apply intensive uh, testing and the statistical techniques, and this will need a lot of, uh, of, 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 of computing power, a lot of, uh, 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 of data that are, that are semantically rich, not just data, okay? And, and uh, this is a challenge. And then this idea of uh, AI oracles, AI oracles to assist the people to make decisions, but also AI oracles that we will integrate in complex autonomous systems for runtime assurance. This is a very important idea in, in systems engineering. No redundancy, but, but monitoring. Monitoring will become very important. So it's time to conclude. Uh, I went faster, in fact, than I had uh, initially uh, estimated. So I think that uh, this uh, uh, marriage of ICT and AI is something very important. Uh, uh, autonomous systems is an important step in our way to artificial general intelligence. And of course, this transition will not be progressive. And we know we learned the lesson from uh, uh, autonomous cars that it will not be progressive. To reach full autonomy, this will need some time. And, uh, of course, we will need to develop a new scientific and engineering foundation. And on this, I would like to thank you for your attention. And, uh, of course, if you have questions, I will be around. Thank you very much. Thank you.